Greetings fellow Gorehounds and welcome back to a Blood Splatter vlog. I'm the Horror Guru. And I'm Count Jackula. And today we're going to talk about The Unholy, which is a movie that came out earlier this year starring Jeffrey Dean Morgan that I watched recently and Jack hasn't watched yet, but it was so bad that I didn't really want to subject him to the movie. <laughs> so we decided we'll do a vlog in which I will talk about the movie, he'll ask questions, and uh, that's easier for me to edit than my solo vlogs I normally do. And right now I'm trying to get my uh, my new blood splattered cinema together and I don't have time to be splitting my editing duties. So we're gonna be doing that this way. And uh, if you actually like this vlog and this format, let me know uh, when you're done watching it, if you want us to do more like that, because there are plenty of movies that I've watched that he hasn't, that we could do this with, so. Yeah. All so right. I'm, I'm getting the feeling this movie sucked. Yeah, okay, so. <laughs> The Unholy, starring Jeffrey Dean Morgan, William Sadler, and Carrie Elways. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> yeah. Whoa, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Back up here. That's not a bullshit cast. That's not a bullshit cast. That is a great fucking yeah, cast. Yeah, yeah. Right? Um, okay, so you have, you have William Sadler, you have Jeffrey Dean Morgan, and you have Carrie Elways. Now, unfortunately, two of those men do a great job in this movie. The other one made a choice, and the choice wasn't very great. Um, Carrie Elways tries to do like a Boston style accent in this movie. It don't work for him. What? What? Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, I'm trying to, sorry, I'm trying to wrap my brain around that entire statement. All right, first of all, they had Carrie Elways do a Boston accent. Yeah, he plays a priest too. What? Not just what? a priest, like a higher up priest in the church. So you, you couldn't have given him the standard snooty, vaguely British accent that he's used in everything? I guess he was supposed to be like like the local head of that uh, of the New England church organization. Well, like, you, you well, keep, yeah. well, this time do the one he did the accent he didn't saw then. I have no idea. I, okay. Yeah. I wish he had done that. It would have been a lot better. Well, like, yeah, he's got a, he's got a really good, like, basic American accent. And now, don't get me wrong, I am a big fan of Carrie Elways. I love yeah, Carrie Elways. So uh, you, but you're telling me he was bad in this. He, he That's not he, right. He made a choice and it, it makes every line he reads far funnier than it's supposed to be. Oh. Um, which actually leads into my actual problem with this movie. So The Unholy is a movie about this washed up um, newspaper reporter who uh, he's washed up because he used to do uh, like occult reporting for a big newspaper. Um, okay, like news of the weird kind of stuff? Yeah, um, but he was caught fabricating some of his uh, his his reports. Say it ain't so. Yeah, <laughs> and he's, play, he's played by Jeffrey Neek, Dean Morgan, and he was caught fabricating his occult reports, so he uh, lost his job, and now he's working for like the Z-list fucking newspapers. Okay. Like, like the tabloid shit. Okay, know? so he's working for like Weekly World News. Yeah, basically. Shit. Okay. Um, and uh, he stumbles across this one town because he was he was called in for a, uh, a cow that uh, was satanic, a satanic cow. Um, Wait, like a cow, cattle mutilation or? It was originally satanic uh, cattle mutilation, but then when he gets there, it's like the cow had a satanic symbol on him. The symbol was the Metallica symbol, like the Metallica logo. <laughs> Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, so... But this actually, this scene actually works pretty well. Like, the beginning of the movie, where Jeffrey Dean Morgan comes into the town, he's a washed-up drunk, he, he's he's an, he's one of those charismatic assholes that you love to watch. Well, yeah, that's Jeffrey <laughs> Dean Morgan all... Yeah, that's every performance he's given. And he scroll, he strolls up, and it's just like, all right, so there was a mutilated cow, and he's like, yeah, they, 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 they did a thing, they did a satanic symbol on the cow's ass. And he's like, I, I thought it was mutilated. It's like, there's a satanic symbol on the ass. I was like, okay, let me see. And he looks at it and he goes, um, hey, uh, do you have like a son, like around 15 or something <laughs> like that? He's like, yeah. <laughs> you never heard of the band Metallica, have you? <laughs> and it shows, it shows a thing. And this scene works. So when this scene happened, I thought I was in for like a fun movie. Now, the thing is, is that the plot is uh, he basically stumbles across this girl at one point in the movie, and this girl is getting voices from this one tree. We see early on in the movie that the tree was a site of which a witch was burned and hanged. 
Okay, all right. Um, and she's getting voices from the tree. She thinks it's the Virgin Mary, but we know as the audience that it's not the Virgin Mary. It's a witch named Mary. Right. So, oh, okay. But the witch is named Mary. Yeah. Ah, oh, okay. All right. All right. Um, but it becomes a holy site, and the church has to come down and confirm the whole thing. But we all know it's secretly a witch that's going to try to, you know, kill everybody. What's the What's the miracle that it performs? Um, it heals people throughout the town. Oh, okay. So all like, right. there's like a boy that is like, uh, like, 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 uh, wheelchair bound, and all of a sudden he can walk. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, because usually you have to have... I, sorry, I know a little bit more about... The first miracle is that the girl that hears uh, the hears Mary's voice, yeah. she's mute. And then she starts talking. Ah, okay. Yeah, because you need like three confirmed miracles. Yeah, they actually as, go through oh, this really? in the movie. Oh, okay. Like we need to confirm the miracles and the miracles have to be spontaneous and they go through like the list of the things they have to be. Right, right, right. Then it has to go before the devil's advocate and all yeah. that shit. And yeah. there's even a, there's even a, uh, there's two people representatives from the church. One is Carrie Elways and one is the guy who is uh, the church guy who's a scientist and is actually going to like try to debunk. Oh, okay. Okay. So he's the devil's advocate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. So he's there to do all that. Um, and, and this portion of the movie, you know, it, it, it's pretty solid. The problem with the movie is tonally the movie doesn't work. Oh. The movie is is ostensibly, like, on paper, an Omen-style classic 70s supernatural slash uh, religious horror movie. Like The Omen, right? Okay, yeah. Like, it feels like it's trying to go for that. That's not what I... That That's not what <laughs> I was getting at all from this plot. Exactly. So, like, it's trying to do something like that while simultaneously, and here's the thing about the movie you've probably heard before, it's a Ghost House picture. Ghost House is Sam Raimi's company, and it's very obvious they're trying to take some inspiration from Sam Raimi's works. Well, yeah. The, the, which is the movie that I thought it was going to be, yeah. based on what you said. And so what you end up happening, if you have moments that feel like Raimi-like moments amidst a very serious plot that's kind of like the omen and it kind of takes you out of of the movie like it feels like whatever the balance is between those two styles of movies this movie ain't it ooh like it wants to be both of those ooh oh and it doesn't oh. help that almost every scare in this movie is a really cheap and badly done jump scare Oh, um, so it's like Drag Me to Hell, but bad. Well, yeah, yeah, kind of, kind of. But Drag Me to Hell had a better balance than this. It did. It, it, it did. Tone. I mean, like, I, I mean, I haven't seen this movie, but it, it had a balance of that. Yeah, like the the tone in Drag Me to Hell feels very natural, and you never have that moment of like, wow, this movie feels like it's got a completely different tone all of a sudden. Well, yeah, yeah, because <laughs> the monsters are always the monsters have that kind of consistency of behavior, yeah, which is fuck with you jump out, scream at you, say some fucked up shit, and yeah. then, like, disappear. And then wait for the next time. So, like, you're watching the movie, and it starts taking a tone more like The Omen, and then you have, like, a really cheap, badly done jump scare. Like, the kind of jump scares that everyone always complains about. Not the good ones from, like, the good horror movies, but, like, the ones that are, like, the cheap bargain bin movies always do. Oh, it turns out it was a cat. <laughs> yeah, that not kind e of shit? Not even that. Like, really bad CGI, like, ghost face flying at the screen like old internet memes you know those oh, old internet jump scares yeah. there's even a point in which it literally happens in a computer screen <laughs> serious yeah yeah there's a point in which one is like scrolling through some footage and then like they vaguely see like this digital face kind of glitched in and then it moves um and if it just stopped at the moving that'd be one thing which is what sinister did when they had that same scare. yeah yeah but when this movie had the scare it jumps out of the screen to, into the camera and then it like cuts to another scene <laughs> okay so we're not even we don't even get the, okay yeah yeah it's, it's, yeah, it's got some really, really fucking bad uh, cheap jump scares. And the other problem is that the CGI in this movie for like all the ghost effects are just really bad. The best ghost effects in this movie are when they just have like a, a uh, one of those contortionist people like moving yeah, around. Yeah, just like, yeah, yeah. Doing all these weird like, like, like ghostly movements and stuff. That works really well, but all the extra effects they add onto the ghost, like, like the weird ethereal effects look so fake. It's just... Right, so, okay, so it's a witch haunting the 
woods around a church, right? Basically, yeah. Okay, so most of the action takes place in the church? There's some things that happen in the church. There's some things that happen outside. Okay. Um, and uh, the main event happens because they build a... Uh, what do you call it? Like a giant tent around the tree in which oh. it's all taking place. Because the, one of the conceits of the movie is that the church is trying to decide whether this is a place of miracles. Um, uh, oh, like, is it good or like, is it evil? Is it a holy site in which people are going to be coming in droves for years? Right. And whether or not the tr tr church wants to put a stamp of approval on that. Uh, right. Wait, but most of it takes place in the tent? There's a lot of stuff that happens in the tent, yeah. But like not the whole movie. Okay, good. Because there's there's points in which Jeffrey Dean Morgan is just going around town and then like a ghost face happens in water while he's walking around a creek. Like it's, Oh <laughs> Okay. Like literally yes. comes out of the water and comes out his face and he's just Oh This is this is not sounding good, man. It's disappointing as fuck because like the intro to the movie, like the first few scenes really set you up for a better movie. And Jeffrey Dean Morgan is fantastic as the lead. Like, he's the kind of asshole you love to hate. Like, yeah, so this is continuing the trend of Jeffrey Dean Morgan starring in a horror movie where he's the best thing about it, but everything else is like... Like eh. The Possession. Like The Possession. Just yeah. like The Possession, actually. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> oh, well, I mean, he's okay. Like, I, I understand oh. the balance they were trying to strike, but I don't think they struck it very well, and I think they would have been better off just going in one or the other direction. Going the full-on Sam Raimi, just goofy route. Well, that yeah, that would have been the track I would have taken, because we, that's the kind of... We haven't necessarily done that yeah. with this type of scenario. Before. Yeah, which would have been great for this movie, especially with the cast it has. You have like yeah. Harry Elways, like him being funny would have been a attribute to the movie. Yeah, no kidding. A detriment to the movie, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know? You'd be like, that guy's got a fucked up stupid accent, and you know, and like, and then in the moment right before he like dies, he just drops it. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You're like, oh man, he wasn't even from Boston. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> When we get to the spoiler spoilers, I'll talk more about the individual characters and what happens with uh, with the Carrie Elway's character. Um, but uh, but pre spoilers, like yeah, like had had the movie actually been going for more of the Sam Raimi tone and like stuck with that, yeah, instead of kind of trying to balance that with like an Omen style thing, I think it would have been a much better movie. Hell, even if it had just gone the Omen route, you know, yeah, it could have worked too. Um, even Jeffrey Dean Morgan's wouldn't need, even need to change. He, 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 Jeffrey Dean Morgan was playing it well enough to where it would work in a serious movie or in a comedy. Like, Got it. Like, you know, he was playing it naturally enough. You know, Carrie Elway's didn't, didn't, didn't feel natural. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't feel natural at all. It's like, uh, do you get the feeling that maybe Carrie Elway's thought he was in a Sam Raimi movie? I don't know. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Maybe if he if he did, then then like forty chests on him because like like that would have been a better that, movie. That would have been way better, probably would have been a better movie. <laughs> now things I do want to like some caveats I want to put here is that I do kind of feel for the movie because I understand that part of what makes some scenes not work in this movie it was out of their control, and that's the fact that this is a movie that's supposed to be about large crowds gathering around a monument that may or may not be a site of the Virgin Mary, right? Right. COVID-19 happened in the middle of the production of this movie. Oops. And because of COVID-19, 90% of this movie, they got stuck using the same like four different rooms with the same five different characters because they couldn't have more characters or more people on set. Right. The time. But then that kind of ruins that whole yeah, tension. Yeah. Now, thankfully, like the big finale of the movie where there's a huge crowd gathering around the tree, that scene was filmed before everything. So that one actually does have the crowd. But okay. like in the midpoint of the movie is where you can really tell the movie's suffering. Oh. You can really fucking tell. All right, so. Because like, especially since once the exposition starts happening, they start explaining like, oh, like this was the witch. This is what the town did, blah, 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 blah. Right. When that's all happening, that feels like the most rushed, like cheap movie shit ever. Oh. To the point where there's a scene where they're literally having a conversation and one of the characters that they're cutting to, and they're cutting to them each individually, even though they're all, they're all supposed to be in the same room together. One of them's clearly on a green screen. Ooh. <laughs> and that's where you can like really tell there's like, Oh, ow. You could tell COVID really hit them hard when they were making this movie. I yeah, feel real bad so they, for them. They, like, they, like, they, they, they couldn't afford to do what fucking 
Army of the Dead did. Like, it's entirely possible that, like, some of my problems with the movie might have been COVID-induced, you know? Like, maybe, this, maybe yeah. the CGI in the movie would have looked better had COVID not happened and, like, slowed down the production. Maybe may, maybe the, the scares wouldn't have been so cheap if they were able to have a full crew and put together more scares on site instead of having a CGI ghost fly at them. Yeah. Like, maybe. I but, don't know. But, I mean, know. just the fact that you, like... I, I, let me put it this way. Just the fact that you're like, yeah, let's just have a CGI ghost fly at the screen. That's already multiple like... Multiple times. Multiple times. That's already like a bad sign. There is there is one really good ghost sequence that I'll talk about when we get to the spoilers. It involves a priest in a church. So very omen-like. Okay. <laughs> so what's the... It, it, the worst part of the movie, is that is that in the spoiler section or can you talk about that now? Worst part of the movie is probably every ghost effect, honestly. Oh. Like the ghost just looks so bad for a majority of the movie. There are part, parts where the ghost looks good. Like towards the finale of the movie, um, that's when you really got like the contortionist walking around as right, the ghost. That right. looks really great. Um, but most of like the ghost faces appearing in the water or on the computer screen stuff, that stuff was so bad. Like it's just, oh, oh. You're, you're like, 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 uh, this is the kind of movie that people complain about when they complain about jump scares. Now I'm a huge jump scare defender because a good jump scare, well, is really yeah, fucking yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. It it's... really hits you right. But this movie is just composed of nothing but bad. Yeah, jump scares are a thing that everyone thinks that they can do, but no. There's a skill and an art yeah. to them, you know? Um, like, James Wan is really good at crafting a jump scare. Yes. You know, and there's a lot of people that want to be James Wan. They're not. They're not. <laughs> you yeah. know? Like, you know? Um, so, yeah. I, I, th I think I should probably move on to the spoilers. This movie's available on various <laughs> streaming platforms to, to rent and buy. I don't know if any of them have it, like, to stream just on the platform, like, like for free if you're subscribed or not. You'll have to check yourself. Um, I'll be putting the Just Watch thing right here to uh, let you know what I was able to find. Um, and with that said, let's just move on to the spoilers. It's getting depressing. <laughs> like... All right. It, it kind of is getting depressing because, like, <laughs> okay, like, okay, first off, Sam Raimi produced horror movie starring Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Yeah, that should be a I'm in. slam dunk. Yeah. I'm in. Second thing, the first like quarter of the movie was pretty fucking solid. Okay, so you got a solid first 20 minutes. Yeah, exactly. And Jeffrey Dean Morgan's a character that I really liked to follow. And I'm like, okay, if you're gonna have like a religious ass movie like this, then like having a character like Jeffrey Dean Morgan, who's just a complete shyster, it's, it's always entertaining. It's like, it's, it, it's what I loved about like um, uh, Cotton, uh, not Cotton, um, The Last Exorcism, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, his name was Cotton in that movie, but. Right. The movie's called Last Exorcism. What I liked about him in that movie, you know, it was like, complete fucking like shyster and in Jeffrey Dean Morgan throughout this entire movie is just he's just trying to like squeeze every ounce of like fucking money he can get out yeah. of this whole situation <laughs> and then naturally by the end of the movie he becomes a believer of like the witch and stuff like that and has to like save the, the girl um who has become the conduit for the witch and stuff okay um now one thing I didn't really like about the end of this movie is that when you get to the end of this movie I feel like the movie was a little bit too religious <laughs> How so? Okay, so... <sighs> Alright, so the finale of this movie, they basically discover that the witch... Um, the witch... Okay, so you have this witch who is performing miracles in this town. Okay. The town decided to fucking sacrifice and kill the witch because devil work, right? Okay. So the witch cursed the town and that she would always be able to live through her children. The, the okay. translation being... Uh, as long as her her bloodline continues, there's always going to be a way for her to enter this world. Okay. All right. Um, and the mute girl who learns to talk and becomes the voice of the Virgin Mary. Right. She's the conduit. She's the descendant. Yeah. That's that's the twist you find out at the end is that because in the beginning of the movie she, he was the she was the priest's niece. Ah. Okay. And the priest is played by William Sadler. And oh, okay. the priest is really great in this movie, actually. William Sadler. William Sadler is one of those men where when he starts crying, you feel it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And his whole thing in this movie is that um, when the when the Virgin Mary starts talking to his niece, he, even though he's the priest of the town, is the skeptic. Oh. He's like, I don't know if this is this is real this or is good. Weird. And he's also, yeah. on top of that, he's also got the problem of even if this is real, historically, these kinds of like P 
people who are the voices of God don't meet happy ends. Yeah, yeah, bad shit happens. So he's got like this gotta protect my niece thing going on. Um, and over the course of the movie, the witch um, uh, through her basically tells people that you gotta you gotta you gotta believe and pledge loyalty to the Virgin Mary, and if you don't, bad things happen. But they don't they don't hear the don't part. <laughs> oh, but that's implied. Okay. And so William Sadler Priest, not being a believer and getting healed because he had like a lung problem. Oh, okay. And uh, the, 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 the witch heals his lung problem. Yeah. But because he's not a believer and he continues trying to disprove the whole thing, the witch comes after him. Okay. And once you get the best sequence in this entire movie where the witch appears to him in the church and then like um, he gets high hanged by the witch and stuff. And it oh, feels okay. like something right out of the omen. Okay. You know, um, it, it's a scene that's taken more seriously than some of the other scares in the movie. And it's the scene that made me go like, yeah, if you had gone either direction, either the Omen route or the, uh, or the Sam Raimi route, route, it yeah. would work either way. Um, the finale is a little bit more Sam Raimi. And I think that part, I think the finale for the most part works, except for the very end of it. <laughs> oh, because they, okay. So I will continue to live on through my children. Right. The implication there being, as long as my descendants exist, right, I exist, right, yeah. So, how do you stop that witch? Right, because you got to kill the kid. Exactly. You know? Yeah. So, kid ends up dead. Oh, okay. Witch ends up disintegrating into nothing. Okay. And then Jeffrey Dean Morgan prays to God, and the kid lives. Are you shitting me? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not shitting you. You're not shitting you. I'm not shitting you. Jeffrey D. Morgan, the, the, the atheist skeptic, prays to God and then the kid lives. Because he's kind of taking like a fatherly kind of like taking to the kid over the course of the movie. Now, here's the thing. I generally, there's a lot of like religious horror movies that I really like. The Exorcist is a great example. I even liked the first Conjuring movie. The second one was kind of messy, but I liked the first one. But one of the things I don't like is when it feels like the religion in the religious horror movie is getting in the way of it being a good story. Good story. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, uh, I... Like, I'm sitting there going, like, she should have stayed dead. Yeah. Like, it should have been the tragic, and this should have been, like, this is the price you pay for trying to milk all the money out of this. Bad right? shit happens, yeah. Like, you kept continuing this on, and now she's dead. Yeah. Like, that should have been, <laughs> you've got to learn to not be a charlatan. Like, that should yeah. have been, like, the thing. But instead of having, like, he prays to God, and then she lives, and then and then they live happily ever after, and now she's kind of like his daughter, and she, he's now with the uh, the uh, the town bartender. Um, what? Okay, yeah, there's, like, a romance subplot over there. Oh, okay. Wait, was it bartender? Okay, it was the town doctor, not bartender. The bartender was a different character. Sorry. <laughs> okay, all right. I, I mashed them together in my head. All right, <laughs> but, like, town yeah, because they... <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> okay. I've skipped over a lot of this movie, but, like... Okay, so, Carrie Elways. Um, it turns out Carrie Elways knew the entire time about it being a witch, and... He was just trying to milk it for profit because he was going to make profit off of making it a holy site. What? Okay, so he knows that like witches are real. Yeah, and he knows that the site was this. The, and he, and he works for the church. Yeah, and he's still going to do this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not saying the church isn't an asshole and. Wouldn't, so, so they, but what? Which I did. I I liked that subplot. The problem is, is that Carrie always makes that subplot so hilarious. And you're like, I'm not sure how seriously I'm supposed to be taking this subplot. Like, right? it's yeah. Well, I mean, like the natural thing to do would be to find out that he was actually like somehow in cahoots. Yeah, with the witch. But well, the know, idea whatever. is is that he's not in cahoots with the witch. He's just a capitalist, right? And he's gonna get fame and money. Oh, he's in it for the money. He's gonna get okay. fame and money by turning this into a holy site that he's gonna merchandise off of for decades to come. Oh. So, I don't care if it's actually a witch, and I know it was a witch, and I know why that witch died, and I know about the doll that they buried with the witch that at the beginning of the movie, Jeffrey D. Morgan stomps on. Um, 
okay, that, there's a lot of plot stuff. That I wow. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, the, I'm catching details here that seem really irrelevant. Because they ultimately are in the end. Okay, so when Jeffrey Dean Morgan finds out about the cow, right. uh, he uh, he decides to create a fake situation again so okay. that he could All sell right. it to someone and make some money because no one's going to want to buy the cow story. Like, <laughs> cow has Metallica written on his ass. Who the fuck cares? Who the fuck cares? Who the yeah. fuck cares? Um, so uh, he, he ends up stumbling across the tree, which is the tree where the witch was hanged. Right. And underneath the tree, he sees this doll. Okay. It's like buried in like this little nook uh, underneath the tree. Um, and he pulls the doll out and it's like um, one of those ceremonial burying dolls that you bury for good luck, except this one is covered in chains. Um, and at the beginning of the movie, when you saw the witch being hanged, you saw like the priest that was that was like oh, the okay. hanging was holding the doll. So the idea is, is they're going to trap the doll, trap the witch inside the soul. Inside the doll. And then and... bury it under the tree. And... Okay. So he pulls it out and he's just like, oh, this looks like an occult thing. Oh, hmm. All right. So he, he stomps on it and he's like, I'm going to tell a story about how someone unleashed a ghost on this town. And then uh, a ghost actually is unleashed in this town. So, okay. Which, which further like continues by like, I feel like he, the ending should have been her dead and it should have been like, this is your fault, Jeffrey D. Morgan. For, yeah. <laughs> if you're doing because this. otherwise, why even have that subplot? You, you, you've been, you've been, you've been, uh, 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 You've been profiting off of tricking people into believing these things are real, like maliciously. Because yeah, I yeah. Mean, you're not like a magician, right? Right. You're not just doing entertainment. Like you're making people believe things that aren't true. Um, and now it is true, and now someone's dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's true because of you, because yeah. you stomped that thing. And and I'm, I'm like, that would have been a much better like ending. Like he had he had to learn the lesson the hard way at the end. But instead, they decided to make it way too Christian, and it's like, oh, I praise to God, and she lives. Did this horror movie have a happy ending? Uh, well, the, in the credits, I they, guess. it's potential, like, the credits imply maybe the ghost is still out there, because that was my big problem with her living. I'm like, yeah. okay, I get that she dies and then the ghost disintegrates into nothing, but then God brings her back to life and then the ghost is still gone? Yeah, like, yeah, isn't, yeah. Isn't the curse I live as long as, as, long as my yeah. children are still alive? So shouldn't the ghost come back? Well, like, at that point, it's it's a literal deus ex machina. Yeah. You know, or yeah, yeah, it's a pure Deus Ex Machina. It's like, it's like, yeah, because a Deus Ex Machina is bringing her back to life and then taking away the consequences of her coming back to life. Yeah, and that that really bothered me. Like it did. Oh, well, it's annoying. You know, it really bothered me. Even like not as like an atheist. Even even if I take away my atheist hat, right? It just bothered me from a storytelling point of view because I felt like. This would have been a better story if Jeffrey D. Morgan is. It ends with him crying over the body of the person who died because of him. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, like, like that. You know, I mean, downer note, but still. Sure, you know. sure, sure, absolutely. And it still would have gotten your like whole Christian message of you shouldn't like right. lie about this yeah. or whatever. But it would have felt less preachy. <laughs> yeah, it, well, I don't know, but preachy is the right word. It would have felt less like. Pious? I don't know what the right word is. It's, 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 weird. it's, it's really all right. The super Christian thing is always going to be a problem uh, in and of itself, but it's really the Deus Ex Machina. It's it. a, the, the fact that there are so many religious Christian horror movies that I love, like The Omen and yeah, and, and uh, The Exorcist. The Exorcist. Um, yeah, even Rosemary's Baby, right? Like, yeah, I love these movies. They're they're great. They're made by Christian people, and and they have very Christian messages. And even if I don't necessarily agree entirely with all the messages, I think they're great movies and great stories. Yeah. I feel like this movie falls flat on that completely. Oh. <laughs> yeah, sounds like it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm sorry about that. So man. I know there's way more I can talk about with this movie, um, but ultimately, I think I've said everything I need to say. The Unholy, it is a pretty bad movie, and it's disappointingly, disappointingly bad because there's so much potential there, and you feel like you're in store for a good movie when you start it. Yeah, so basically the, the beginning of the movie tricks you into thinking this is not going to be a yeah. very generic fucking... And then it becomes and then one. then it becomes one. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Even though its plot is a little unique and I really like the plot, and I think there's a lot of good ideas there. Um, they just need to be executed better. Now, in the defense of, of them, COVID might have contributed to the movie being as much of a mess as it feels. Um, but, like... 
I'm sure that there's some of these problems I would have had regardless. Um, well, yeah, if you filmed like I don't think COVID gave him, Yeah, I don't think COVID gave him that ending, right? Yeah, like no. you could have. It would been way easier to just not do that. The, the the one good thing I will say about this movie is that William Sadler and fucking Jeffrey D. Morgan act their asses off throughout this movie. And if you want a good cheesy laugh, you can watch, laugh at Carrie Elway's because his performance is so over the top <laughs> and it feels like it's a completely different movie and his accent is so bad. <laughs> um, and, and the rest of the cast like does decent jobs um, and it would have been fine in a better movie. But yeah. Um, So yeah, um, where can I find you, Count Jackula? Well, you can find me on Twitch at count underscore jacula where i stream twice a week on thursdays and sundays at 6 p.m pacific standard time and i might be adding a third day sometime soon um you can also catch me on uh sometimes on penny for a tale where i am part of their ttrpg cast i'm currently going to be in uh their cult game that's pretty cool yeah i like that i like that game that's pretty awesome yeah you can also follow me on twitter at jack satan wave and on instagram at satanic jackie and how about you y'all know me i'm the horror guru you can find me on twitch on facebook on youtube on instagram just look up the horror guru or blood splattered cinema and i'll be there be sure to check out our patreon pages if you would like to help out either of us more directly and remember if you decide to go the patreon route even a dollar a month can go a long way don't forget to like comment and subscribe and ring that notification bell so that you're notified of my videos immediately upon their upload and if you make it this far into the vlog then put hashtag Sad Dean Morgan. <laughs> hashtag, hashtag Sad Dean Morgan in, in your comment below. Work it into your comment below so that I know you made it all the way through this vlog all the way till the end. And uh, with that said, peace out, my fellow Gorehounds, and I'll catch y'all later. Power of Christ makes the movie suck. Yeah. Yeah.